Okay, thank Honourable you, Mr. Acting President. Um, and thank you to the Honourable Member, Laurie Graham, for bringing this motion to the House. Um, nothing I love more than being able to talk up the beautiful region that I represent, uh, the mining and pastoral electorate. Um, it's been busy uh, since 2017 and uh, going off the motion that the Honourable Laurie Graham has brought to the House, um, we're acknowledging the range of projects that have been successfully delivered by the McGowan Government across regional Western Australia. I will focus on the Kalgoorlie Goldfields region um, because to me that's where I spend most of my time at the moment and it's a great part of Western Australia. Um, that has come a long way um, in two years and we've worked very hard from my office to ensure that uh, we're out there being visible and delivering on the projects and commitments that we made in the 2017 election and many other things that are popping up as we go. So I believe that we're doing a very good job um, on delivering what we set out to do. And one of the key, one of the great things about this is all the projects that we are involved in, we have heavily involvement in, um, from the community groups uh, to the department to uh, all the people on the ground that make them, make them possible. And I think that happens at a, at a bigger level in regional Western Australia because a lot of small projects turned out to be such a huge impact um, on these small communities. Uh, I will acknowledge that the work that the Honourable Alana McTiernan has done has been amazing um, in regional Western Australia. And it's very well acknowledged in Kalgoorlie that uh, she's one of the hardest working ministers, because she's always in Kalgoorlie to start with, um, like she is everywhere else in Western Australia. But she gets out there and gets the job done. And one of the key projects for me that uh, kicked all this off was the, uh, the dog fence. You know, the dog fence, um, before I got into Parliament, wasn't something that I'd ever really inquired into. Um, being from the maritime side of things, it was um, a bit uh, new for me to talk about a dog fence. But, uh, but I did learn quite quickly that uh, pastoralists right across my region were upset. Um, there had been a lack of investment, there had been a lack of care, a lack of understanding, a lack of consultation, a lack of pretty much anything to do with a dog fence. Um, for many years, and this had affected particularly the sheep stocks and uh, a lot of other uh, pastoral type situations as well. So the minister was very quick to get it all off and running with a wild dog forum, which I was uh, honoured to attend with the minister, and we brought in people from right across the regions and got to work very quickly. One of the successful projects out of uh, the pool of funds the Minister made available was $2 million to the dog fence in Kalgoorlie. Um, the Kalgoorlie Pastoral Alliance cell fence, I was happy enough uh, to be with the Minister not too long ago when we stood there and uh, there was already a section of it underway. But there was a lot of things around this project that go to the heart of what the McGowan Government does, I believe, with projects, is it makes sure that the local content the local providers, the local procurement, everyone from the local area is getting a go at that project. So the local rangers um, cleared the old fence, which, um, which was quite a job and it was an excellent job they did. They cleared the area for it to go through. We had local contractors doing the work. <coughs> we had some fence work done out at Southern Cross, which was done by a local Aboriginal contractor as well. And these were <coughs> really beneficial projects for these, for these small businesses. Um, and also for the credibility of the organisations, because they're competing with work that's coming from the state government and they're getting it on a local, local basis, which I think is a really great thing to do with um, when we have local projects in, in the region, to make sure we capitalise on. So another great project that we're, we're uh, full steam ahead on uh, is Aboriginal Ranger programs. You know, these programs are amazing. And I, I uh, actually had the honour to attend recently the Southern Desert Ranger Forum with uh, my lecture officer George Folks Taylor and me went out to Lorna Glen, um, which was amazing, um, to, to say the very least. It was an experience to be around over 120 rangers from around the state, and, and there were some from South Australia and Northern Territory. They all come in on the four-wheel drives with the swags on the back, ready to go. We, uh, we poured our swags along and we were able to roll it out under the stars for the night. But to be able to listen to the expertise and the culture and everything that goes into land management and horticulture, and it's the sort of stuff that just you know, makes you feel proud that the investment that we're doing is having a real positive 
outcome. Whilst we were there, the, the local kids from the school in Waluna came out on the bus. And it was just amazing. They got off the bus yelling and screaming and they went over to, to all the rangers and, and started to explain to them why they're out here and what they're going to be doing. And there were certifications happening. The TAFE was out there. There was all these different services that were taking advantage of this great, great initiative. And we, we are investing $18.7 million in Aboriginal Ranger programs alone. And I think that is a huge success and that type of project needs to continue to be driven. You know, we're lunar rangers, we've got um, rangers out in Norseman, uh, you've got the Central Desert, that they are everywhere. And I think they're doing a fabulous job on getting connection between departments and people that have thousands of years of history with the land that we're on. And I think this type of expertise that they provide is something that you can't just buy, you have to you have to allow it to foster and grow. And I think the Ranger program is one of them programs that will continue to be a great one moving forward into the future. Um, I don't have too much time and there's so many great projects and I, I do get a little bit passionate about it. Um, but one of the great ones that we opened up the other day, uh, which we I was with the Minister for Transport, Rita Safiotti, and we were able to launch uh, into one of our election commitments, which was, the, uh, the road section on the Anzac Highway and uh, Gategar. Um, I knew I'd stuff this one up because I got it wrong on the day. But uh, Gate Acre is the name of it. And um, it was, it's a really sort of dangerous section as you're coming in. And yes, <laughs> yes, I did bugger that one up, but uh, we'll move on. Um, but uh, there is a real dangerous section as you're coming in off the Great Eastern Highway heading into Kalgoorlie. And uh, a lot of truckies, a lot of businesses, everyone's really excited about that project. And uh, it's underway. Main Roads have done a lot of work to get it to where it is. And I think it's going to be uh, pretty good going into the future. We also have uh, $160,000 um, to, to uh, Aboriginal uh, Mining Academy, which uh, Kerry Mining um, is actually um, going to be running. And this is a critical thing because you know, there's always questions we ask mining companies about how much Aboriginal employment do you have and, you know, I've seen across all different industries how hard and how sometimes people don't put in enough effort into ensuring um, we're doing the right things like pre-employment, um, medicals, all this sort of stuff that needs to go in and there's challenges particularly in Indigenous communities like driver's licences, um, criminal records that come from not paying fines and stuff, stuff that needs to be navigated through. Um, and some companies just don't bother doing it um, and then say it's too hard. Other companies, don't get me wrong, there's some out there that do a good job at it. And you know, Kerry Mining came from Tropicana originally by originally just getting a contract um, and becoming a contractor. Now they're, they're massive and the, the, uh, Daniel Tucker's doing a great job out there um, trying to get together an academy there where Aboriginal people in the area can train and then be placed into mining companies. As a really, really good scheme, $160,000, very well spent. Um, we've also got the uh, $11.7 million for two family and domestic violence hubs. One of them will be in Kalgoorlie. That was very well accepted by the community. Domestic violence is not to be tolerated or accepted in the community, and that is something that needs to be addressed. And that's something that I think this community hub is going to give more opportunities for people to come in, um, get the services they require in one hit, collaboratively, <coughs> rather than having to go to different services. And I think uh, the services in Kalgoorlie at the moment are doing a fabulous job at ensuring that uh, the community members are being looked after. So it's been a very busy two years and there's a lot more I could go through, but I'm running out of time. Um, but one of the things I do want to uh, announce is I'm very happy to say that uh, we've had ministers come and go through the region flat out since 2017. The Premier's been out there, the Deputy Premier, uh, the, the Honourable Alana McTiernan is always out there. And we have a community cabinet coming up very shortly where all the ministers will be coming out to see some of the great projects that we've been doing, announce 
where we're heading and uh, give the opportunity, as we always have done since we've gotten in, for the community members within the Goldfields region to have a direct voice here in Parliament. Regional WA is in a great position. I believe the McGowan government is doing an awesome job in regional Western Australia and will continue to do that whilst we're here in government. Thank you. I give the call to the Honourable Alana